<laughs> she's worked extremely hard and she's been so successful. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Gymnasts on Zoom drinking coffee. I am joined today by Morgan Hurd, 2017 World All-Around Champion, five-time world medalist, future Florida Gator, and Olympic hopeful. Thank you for joining me, Morgan. Thank you for having me. Sometimes we get, we have technical difficulties with us. Last week, you'll, this, this did not work out for you. So <laughs> to do, like I have Indianapolis up in my background because this is we're on the eve of Winter Cup weekend. I want to see if you have a Zoom background or like a photo or something that you use or anything like that that you want to pop up to try to kind of just make it a little bit more fun. Um, I usually never use backgrounds. This is typically just my background for all my Zooms. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I really like the records and then you've got like your medals on the background and stuff. Yeah. So are you like super into music? Um, Not I mean, like, I like music, but I'm not like a huge, like music junkie or anything. <laughs> yeah. I read that like on your USA gym profile. It was like, um, oh my God, that thing's so old. I, that hasn't been updated since I like first got into the system. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's so funny because I see so many people talking about it and they're just like, um, back when Nia Dennis went viral the other week, mm -hmm. the one article was like citing her like hopes, um, from, oh my God from like six yeah. years ago. Yeah, none of us like ever update it. Like once it's in there, like none of us just bother to update it. It just stays like that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> not necessarily the most reliable source of information, but when I was looking at it, it's always good to see that. And then like we check, I check out like the FIG profile and stuff. And that's usually a little bit better. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that was saying that you just didn't have like any particular music interest, just kind of like whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, basically I, I really like indie, but. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything to drink or are we going drinkless today? We I have some coffee. Uh, I am going drinkless. I just got home, so I ha didn't have time to make anything. It's snowing here, so the roads were all nasty and it took me longer than usual. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, I totally understand that. The whole country is like, oh yeah, in madness. And it's okay. it matches, it matches the vibe. <laughs> it really does. Like it's really accurate. Yeah. It's funny because like, um, I'm down in Georgia, so mm -hmm. we're kind of avoiding this. It's like no snow, um, wow. really cold. Um, so we kind of get the worst of both worlds. I don't know. It's right. just, cold. <laughs> we don't have any snow. We never get snow. It's like once every couple of years. Right. Um, and the rest of the country is just, there's oh, yeah. out emails, you know, saying like USAG is sending out emails, like we're going to get all this stuff figured out and yeah. for winter cup and things yeah, like that. I mean, I mean, Delaware is pretty used to the snow, so this isn't like crazy. It's just like the roads are just like nasty because it was more like uh, icing than snowing. But Texas yeah. is just like not equipped for this at all. No. Oh, my they're, God. They're dying. They're like without power and they're yeah. called snowpocalypse. We had kind of not anything like Texas has right now. But a few years back, we had something that we dubbed like snowpocalypse back in like 2014. Yeah. And school was out for like a whole week, but we had like an inch of snow. Like I'm not even kidding. It was an inch of snow. And then over in Texas, it's like feet of snow. Yeah. Like, that's, that's insane. I can't imagine, especially the girls that are training in Texas that yeah. are having to prep for Indianapolis or the guys too, that are having to prep for Indianapolis and hope to travel up there. And who knows if they're like even making it to the gym right now. So. Right. <laughs> some current event topics. I want to talk about NCAA, um, Olympic qualification process, and Winter Cup. I want to get your thoughts on Florida this season, but first, I do want to kind of recap viewers on where you stand. So you're with Florida. You're, you signed your national letter of intent with Florida in November of 2019, and kind of the gist, and correct me if I'm wrong, was that you're going to, you were going to join Florida after like 2021 world. So in 20, the start of the 2022 season. Yes. Okay. So that was before Tokyo was postponed. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are probably wondering like, is that still the plan or is it, if you make the Olympic team, how would that change? Um, I feel like everything's kind of up in the air right now. As of right now, my plan is to attend Florida in January of 2022, but like, 
I mean, what this past year has taught us is that expect the unexpected. So really, you never know. I'm just playing everything like day by day. Yeah, definitely. And so like, let's say just like kind of like a scenario, Olympics play out. Let's say you make the Olympic team. Yay. <laughs> and um, I mean, a lot of people usually take a break after the Olympics, but would is 2021 Worlds in, also in Japan also something that's on your mind? It's another individual world kind of yeah later yeah I would I would love to still try to go for that world's team and then I am going on the gold across America tour yeah in I believe September October it goes to December so I would do that afterwards as well yeah and have you heard speaking of that it's kind of with everything going on the past year I feel like that's kind of gone to the back of everyone's minds just like I was like focused on Tokyo happening and then everything after that but have you heard any, um, now that tour is kind of rung up by, brought together by Simone, correct? Yes. So have you heard anything about that tour? Are they still like planning on doing it? Or has it kind of just been like quiet right now, focused on the Olympics and then afterwards? Well, as of right now, it is still going on. Um, I believe flyers were just sent out to gyms. I, our gym just, my gym just received ours. Um, and we have a schedule and everything. So as of right now, they plan for it to go ahead. Okay, cool. Well, that's good to know. And that's something really exciting. It's kind of new and it's cool that, you know, it's kind of athlete led. So I feel like it's going to have a different vibe than the typical USAG one. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm very excited to be on it. Um, Okay. So let's actually talk about Florida. So Florida, number one in the rankings all season so far, they're the ones to beat. It just went 198 plus in a thriller against LSU. So what are your thoughts on the team? And just kind of, I know you've been following along this season, tweeting about Trinity oh and the girls. So <laughs> give me your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, Florida is just like insane. I, that's one of the reasons that I chose the school. I just knew the team was just going to be amazing. I loved the entire atmosphere of the team. It felt like a big family. I loved the coaching staff. They felt like family as well. Um, and I mean, they're insane this season and even last season, they went undefeated last season as well. And they, they're here to finish what they started because they didn't get to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as somebody who, if you hadn't deferred, you would have been with the team this season, correct? Yes. I technically would have been with the team starting in 2019. Okay. 2019. Yeah. I graduated high school in 2019. 2019. Okay. So it's been, you're deferring over two years. So I mean, how is it? Now, obviously, like you're going to get your chance, um, hopefully, and then you'll get those four years. But what is it like kind of sitting back? And do you ever have moments where you're just like, like, I love training and I'm glad I deferred, but also like, I wish I was with my team already. No, I definitely do, especially seeing so many of like my past elite friends and teammates um, already in college and everything. Uh, I actually watching all the videos last weekend, it makes me go like emotional. I'm like, oh, I could be there with all my friends and everything. And just like the team atmosphere, that's why I'm really excited for college because I absolutely love team meets. Those are my absolute favorite. It just has a whole different energy and vibe to it. Yeah. And I'm very excited for that. Yeah. And I mean, everybody kind of touching on Trinity Thomas because she's a big. Oh, she's insane. Topic <laughs> right now. Let me get your thoughts. The whole gym night, I feel like, was just literally like, Trinity should have been after three rotations on um against LSU she should have should have been 30 for 30 what do you think oh for sure I they they are robbing her of these tens and I'm not here for it hey at least they, I will say I think everyone was like LSU just because it's like an away meet is not going to give her a 10 at all when she's just that's having true. like the meat of her life and they did give her the four ten. so yeah. That's, That's very true. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, everybody was just like, oh my gosh, with this crazy scoring, right? You can't just give her, let's just give her 40 out of 40 and be done. Exactly. Like it's so well deserved. Yeah. <laughs> she's worked extremely hard and she's been so successful. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I had to put my cats up because when I was oh. talking with Yule the other day, my cat just walked across the street. Oh, yeah. My cat is, um, loves the attention and anytime I'm on zoom she always tries to hop in all the time yeah Yeah, mine will sit there and just like I have one that will just run and she just likes to headbutt me she's like I want to headbutt you and I want attention now and she's the kind of one that will literally like if you don't give her attention she'll like smack you 
oh my cat does that too but she does it more to be like mean um she'll just like I'll wake up in the morning and I'll just be laying there and she'll just come up and slap me and then run away can you stop Jesus <laughs> well I mean I guess that's an interesting way to wake up in the morning yeah let's talk about all around world cup cancellation which is I mean by the time this airs it's going to be like a couple weeks old but it's still something to talk about because the U.S. women were awarded a plus one and I've talked to Eddie Penev and Yul Moldauer in the past couple of weeks and you know those guys actually missed out on that plus one so they're going to have maximum of five gymnasts in Tokyo while with Jade Carey basically locking up an individual birth this means that the ladies will probably have six women in um Tokyo now you're an all-arounder so it doesn't necessarily completely impact you because you're more likely to make the team versus one of these individual specialist spots but what was kind of your reaction and did you hear anything I know that the guys had talked to like the national team coordinator did anyone talk to did you hear from Tom and kind of what were your thoughts on that yeah we got an email about it when that news broke and everything um I felt pretty disappointed just because that just gives us kind of less um opportunities to go and compete this year now it's just the domestic meets yeah and that's basically we're basically gonna have this winter cup classics and championships which are extremely important and then trials and then we have to and then whoever makes the team has to go compete at the olympics with absolutely zero experience this year under their belt yeah you all number saying is just, just like usually you'd be like started the olympic year and hoping to get you know um, an international assignment, get a little bit of that experience under your belt, especially for say, you're not a first year senior, but like first year seniors. That, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. That are eligible, like Connor McLean, who's now eligible to potentially make the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. um, she won't have any of that international experience or somebody like her um, or anyone else kind of in that boat. So it's definitely difficult, <laughs> um, but I feel like also you guys have been through a lot in the past year. So that's just one more hurdle on the road to Tokyo. Right, exactly. And I mean, it's not like it's just the U.S. that won't be able to participate in these meets. It's it's everyone. So yeah. it's even playing field. Yeah, definitely. So you don't have to worry about being the odd ones out. Right. Uh, okay, so let's move on to Winter Cup. So this is, I know, like for the guys, it's some kind of sometimes a little bit different. But correct me if I'm wrong. This is your first meet back since your win at 2020 American Cup, correct? Okay, so what is the game plan? What events are you planning? Are we going to be seeing any upgrades? Or are you going to be like focused on just hitting four for four? Yeah, so right now we still haven't made the actual final decision on whether or not I'm going to be competing. Okay. Um, it's just been kind of a little rough getting back into the gym. I had a few surgeries back in August and then I had a quarantine in January. So as of right now, I fully have beam. And so I'm just trying to see if there's um, another event that I can pull together safely enough to go and compete. Which event, like, do you think it'd probably be like, just like a vault or are you more focused on like getting floor and um, floor or bars over so you could compete? Like, which ones are you mo more, more, most focused <laughs> on besides beam? Um, I'm more likely to have either floor or vault. Okay. That makes sense. And speaking of your floor routine, Obviously you had like a new floor routine last year, mm -hmm. and then everything happened. And <laughs> now we're back again and hoping that doesn't happen again. So is there a new floor routine? Are we out with the old and with the new? Yes, I do have a new floor routine. <laughs> okay, and can we get any hints on it or is it themed or kind of, what's the inspiration? Is it Tokyo themed or yeah? <laughs> it is not, um, but it's very much, in my forte, I think people right. will really enjoy it. It's ha it's a little, I'd say it's a little lighter. It's kind of more 2017-esque, I would say, in music sense. I know I, that was a crowd favorite. Yeah. But it, still, it definitely has those serious moments for when I need to put on, like, my face. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, I mean, 2017, I guess, is a good routine to channel since that was a you were right. crowned world all around champion. Yeah. So just all the good vibes this year. Oh yeah, none of them. Get all. <laughs> um, gotta take all the good luck that we can. Right. Um. So I have pulled a couple of clips, 
and uh, we're just gonna kind of watch them. I'm gonna share my screen with you. And I want to just kind of get your reaction. We have one throwback since this is kind of winter cup edition of the show. Um, we are going to look at, and Nastia Lucan Cup is gonna be yeah. involved in winter cup this um, weekend for people who don't know. Um, so, Nastia Lucan Cup, we're gonna flash it back to 2014. I believe you were about 13 years old. Yeah, I was, I was 12 turning 13 that year. 12 turning 13. Oh, baby. Um, baby Morgan Heard. So baby. let's let's watch that and then we'll have one more clip after that. I actually have an interview of you with Nastia. Oh no, I um, remember that. I, they told me, they had like told me the question beforehand. And so I practiced it in my head at least yeah. a dozen times. And then I still messed it up. I switched oh. up my words and I just remember doing that. And I was like, you're so stupid. And then I still do it to this day anyways. <laughs> you think, you think I'd be like a pro by now, but no. No, I mean, like it's, it's never a matter of like, I don't think you can ever be a pro at public. Right. Business. Yeah. Like, no, I still don't know how to speak actually. <laughs> <laughs> like same. Sometimes I wake up and I'm just like, no. Um, <laughs> Okay, oh. so this is like 30 seconds. Let's watch it. And then, oh my gosh, like Nastia looks even like so young. <laughs> let's watch it oh. and let's just see. <laughs> uh, let's see. So this has to probably be the biggest competition of your career so far. Tell me what's going on in your head right now. Um, I'm about 85% nervous and the rest is kind of excitement, but nervous or like the other way around actually. More excited than nervous? Yeah. That's good. So are you at all intimidated by this? I mean, you are so tiny. I actually had to take my shoes off to even get down to your level. Um, not really, I guess. It's just kind of big. <laughs> all right. Well, best of luck today. Thank you. <laughs> oh, first of all, why do I sound like that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, yeah, it's like the, it's oh. like, for lack of a better words, just like that pre-puberty, I guess. I kind like, of want to see how like, Oh my God. <laughs> it's incredible. It's, it's incredible how much like your voice changes from like 12 or Thank 13. God. Thank yeah. God. If I still sounded like that, I would never speak. <laughs> I'm not going to have like the volume up high for this one. Okay. So feel free to react to how. Okay. Um, so this is your bars from Nasty Luke and Cup because we didn't want to just do the interview. Let's watch this. She's going to get from the low bar to the high bar though. I'll be honest with you. The, high, the low bar is definitely. Oh, yeah. the tiny. It's so funny. They were talking about how you're shorter than the high bar. Oh yeah. I could just like walk right under it. Good stuff. Wow. Just really being aggressive. Little on so that. much like you had yeah, to cast up that hand sand. This is like the nastiest stakacha I've ever. <laughs> she doesn't even need to bend her body to pass by the lower rail. She's something. That was great. You know, not as high difficulty as we've Oh my gosh. They were, I mean, they were hyping you up though. I right. <laughs> For what? <laughs> They were just like, they were like, oh my gosh, she is awesome. Like, look at that, look at that. I mean, it was a good routine, especially for, you know, being 12 years old. Um, and like that land, that discount was incredible, um, especially for your age. But it was it's just so funny when they're just like, she can walk under the low bar and she doesn't even have to bend her body. Um, okay. And then, you know this, we're just talking about this, but let's, Kind of flash it back to the moment when, like, you were on gym fans' radars, but this was when you got on the world's radar. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's always good to flash it back and kind of see how far you've even come in the past four years. So let's watch this. <laughs> I know Eddie also told me that you, um, that there was, like, a corner of this floor that was really bouncy do you remember that or did y'all did y'all have oh uh, vaguely but i think they fixed it during the men's or okay. something like that so we're going to be seeing some uh, music that's more like this esque. yeah i'd say it's more like uh light-hearted and less serious like i've done in the past few years <laughs> Now, do you think the arena was dark in this? Uh, the lighting was definitely weird, and you could not see the crowd whatsoever. 
Oh my gosh. Which I, I, I mean, I liked that you couldn't see the crowd, yeah. but <laughs> it was, was weird for like bars and beam. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like, it, it kind of could be like good and bad not to see the crowd. Yeah, but, you, could yeah. Hear, you could hear them. They were a very, it was a very good crowd, but you could not see them at all. <laughs> So, I mean, when you went into this final rotation, were you like even thinking about the fact that you could win or were, was it just like, let me hit and we'll worry about that afterwards? It was more of a, I vaguely knew my standings. I tried not to look at them, but I, I accidentally caught a glimpse mm -hmm. and I'm very certain I was tied with Ellie or maybe we were one, two, yeah. but I was just like, I just need to stay on my feet and what will happen will happen. Like, my thoughts going into all round final anyways was just oh that'd be i'd like to make top 10 but it'd be really cool if i could get a medal yeah <laughs> but i mean and for people who aren't familiar or maybe started following gymnastics after this like when y'all went into montreal not you were on the world team like it wasn't like you were an alternate or something and you replaced um her but reagan was kind of the yeah she was the favorite she was the yeah. favorite like that's who was expected to win and yeah, and honestly, I, I I didn't even expect to make the world's team. No one really expected me to make it. I had a really bad showing at nationals. I think I felt like twice. I got like fifth place, but then I, I don't know, something just sparked between then and camp and I just did really well at camp and earned my spot. And yeah. I, I just remember being very controversial that I was even on the team. <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was like, people were just like, some people were like, why? Like, it doesn't, like, some people were like, I don't agree with this. And um, I mean, you really just proved them wrong. Yeah. And, uh, and honestly, it, it was a shock to me too that I even made the team. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least it's kind of looking on the bright side, but it's like, wow. Like, I I mean, it's probably looking back at this, like how far do you feel like you've come really far since then? Oh, I I mean, definitely. I feel like um, I've had, I've obviously like steadily improved not only like in my technique and everything, but in my confidence as well. Yeah. And then- this was an individual worlds. This was your first world medal ever. Yeah. And then after that, um, since then you've gotten four more, um, mm -hmm. three individual and then a team. So, I mean, like, it's just like your first world medal was an all around the world medal, which is like essentially like the crown of worlds, especially in an individual year. Right. Um, and now like, I feel like you kind of just haven't stopped. You said that, that you flipped that switch for world selection camp and then you made the team and I feel like it just kind of hasn't switched off I mean obviously you've had injuries and stuff mm -hmm. since then which happens but for the most part you've been a staple on the American scene for this entire quad um, and sometimes especially since you um, were, could have graduated and not deferred you might a lot of girls may go into college and drop off of the elite scene but you've been dedicated, you've been committed. And like, I mean, obviously you had to wait a year, but do you feel like you're kind of coming full circle? Like the quad is finally ending and like you're, you're kind of reaching where you have been wanting to reach basically your whole career? Oh, I mean, for sure. This is what I've been working for ever since I was younger. I remember even when I was in classes and everything, my goal was always the Olympics. I've Obviously, I didn't know like what it took to get there. Um, um, I didn't know what elite was. I honestly didn't even know what national championships were until I qualified, until I got there. Yeah. They told me I qualified for national. I was like, okay, I didn't, I didn't know. But yeah, I just, the reason like I've stuck around for so long and not um, have gone to college is just like, I don't feel like I finished my job yet. And I don't want to have regrets later down the road that like, oh, I should have stayed or I shouldn't have um, gone to college so soon. I, I'd rather just play it out completely and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, definitely. It's no secret to people who follow you that you're a bookworm, um, or maybe, I don't know if that's the proper term. I like books and bookworm. I, 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 that's a good term. <laughs> um, so what has been your favorite book in quarantine or since the pandemic happened? I need to like look at my shelf. I last summer I read like 15 books in the matter of like two months. Oh my gosh. Um I guess one of my favorites that I read was either On the Come Up by Angie Thomas mm -hmm. or Suggested Reading, but I forget who wrote that one. <laughs> okay. Cool. I haven't heard of either of those. I'll have to look them up. 
Um, what is your favorite TV show right now? Um, my favorite TV show is probably Haikyuu. Haikyuu. Yeah, it's a it's an anime about like volleyball. Okay, cool. That's interesting. It sounded it sounded familiar. Um, I was half expecting you to say WandaVision because I heard you like Marvel, but oh I, yeah, I haven't watched that though yet. <laughs> I haven't either. It's I heard that it's pretty good, but also like I also heard through the grapevine that you really need to like refresh on the Marvel movies. Oh to really? Understand it. Oh, yeah. um, so I feel like I need to do my due diligence before. Oh, I yeah, probably. <laughs> um, okay, so I know you like sushi. What is your favorite type of sushi roll? Um, I prefer sashimi and I really like tuna sashimi. Okay, cool. Um, what is your dream job, gymnastics aside? I will do anything that lets me travel around the world freely. Okay, all right. Um, if you could be any animal, what would it be and why? <laughs> um, I'd be a cat because cats get to stay inside and they get to be taken care of and they sleep most of the day. Yeah, they're the queen or king. Exactly, no, yeah. <laughs> Their behavior is always excused because that's just how cats are. Yeah, exactly. Can't be trained, can't be bossed around. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Um, what is one of the things you would put on your bucket list? Uh, one of the things on my bucket list right now is to go skydiving in Australia. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Would you go with Keith Thorpe? Oh yeah, of course. It's because he already went, but I, and I got really jealous. So yeah, I think he went with like, um, Georgia Godwin and like some yeah. of the other Australian teammates. So yeah, yeah you gotta like catch up once the pandemic is over. I know. Over. Yeah. <laughs> um, parachute into like the outback and like <laughs> kangaroos on your way down or something. Right. <laughs> um, who is your favorite superhero and why? I would say Dr. Strange. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just think he's really cool. And I really like the actor that plays him. So. Oh yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. Cause he, he was in Sherlock too. And I really like Sherlock. <laughs> Yeah, Sherlock is also, I mean, he's just kind of been like, in a lot of the roles where it's just like, I don't know, very smart, like. Yeah, it's like, it's like the quick wit that I think gets yeah. me. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, I watched Dr. Strange a while ago and I didn't think I would like it. And I actually ended up being one of my favorite Marvel movies. Like, Oh yeah, mine too. I've watched it like probably 10 times. <laughs> you okay. just like, I just didn't expect the storyline. I've never been a comic book person. And then like. Yeah, me neither. He really made makes that role. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and then lastly, what is your favorite leotard? Ooh. I'd say my favorite comp leotard was the purple one that I wore for day two of 2019 championships because I designed that one. Oh, okay. Do you have, um, are you more into designing your le leotards? Like, will we see any of your designed leotards for the couple of domestic um, uh, season? Uh, yeah, I actually have designed those already. Um, I don't like completely freehand draw them like Olivia Dunn yeah. used to. I kind of just like pull inspiration from like ball gowns, red carpet dresses, ice skating mm -hmm. dresses and stuff like that. I, I'm not creative enough to just completely draw out a Leo. That's okay. I mean, take the temp base template and then add in what you like. Um, is there any star who like you particularly like their red carpet style or any person in particular that inspires you? Uh, not necessarily. I just kind of go on Pinterest and look up random stuff and whatever sparks my eye. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of women, especially even the guys can relate to that. Um, yeah. Pinterest is a go-to for that. So we kind of touched on this, but um, Tomas.l.d says, do you feel competition ready? Um, I don't feel quite competition ready just yet, but it's very early in the season. So I don't expect myself to. Yeah. And it's kind of something where I guess like you can just, you'll get there over time and you're not in a rush. You oh, for sure. aren't peaking, peaking necessarily. Yeah, no, not yet. <laughs> I'm soon. Um, so what do you like the most about gymnastics and what's your favorite skill from Alice Kalua? I, I don't know if I said that right. 
Uh, what I like most about gymnastics is that it's something different every day and it's something extremely challenging and it's not something that um, everyone is capable of doing, which I think is really cool and makes it really unique. Mm -hmm. I'd say my favorite skill is uh, Navieva. Navieva, okay. Um, is 2024 a possibility? Um, let's, let's get through 2021 first and then we'll talk about 2024. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely feel that it's like, that's a bit a ways away, even though it's like <laughs> only three years away, but it feels like a lifetime away. Yeah. Um, let's see. What was the hardest part of coming back from spring 2020? And yeah. Uh, I'd say the hardest part was just getting back into shape and, oh my God, stop. And, <laughs> and, uh, just really getting back into the gym and kind of not necessarily relearning all the skills, but just getting back into it. Yeah, definitely. Um, Paige Matias says, you are so amazing. That was just the comment, not, not oh, a well, thank you. <laughs> um, how are you feeling mentally for the Olympic year? I feel very mentally indifferent just because we still don't know exactly what's going to happen. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to go into the gym and really have a goal in mind yeah. um, just because meets are already being canceled and, you know, things aren't necessarily getting better with this pandemic. They're actually getting worse, but in a sense, I guess they're getting better uh, with the raw of the vaccine and everything. But so, but I just go into the gym and just train as if everything's completely fine. And a follow-up to that. I mean, do you feel like you've, and I think you'll kind of said this, and I feel like I've heard this from a few different athletes, but do you feel like you've developed more of a pre, an appreciation for just gymnastics in general and not necessarily just getting to a, like the Olympics or worlds or a point, but just enjoying the moment? Um, I'd say so, yes, because uh, being out of training for so long, you kind of learn to appreciate that, oh, at least I'm training now. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. What is your biggest challenge as a gymnast? My biggest challenge is my mental game. Okay. Um, and then the last one, the username is extremely long. Uh, but how did you get into gymnastics? Uh, when I was younger, my mom put me in multiple different sports just to keep me active. I was in gymnastics. I did several different types of dance, I did t ball, soccer, ice skating. And obviously as I got older, I couldn't do all those sports. And so I slowly start to quit them. And gymnastics was just the one that I always wanted to go back to. Yeah. Ice skating. That's interesting. Did you? Yeah, I did that for a month. <laughs> only for a month. Okay. I only did it for, and I, I think I only did it because my friend was doing it. Mm -hmm. But I think it was more like that. I just didn't like the instructor because she kept yelling at me for falling. So I think that's why I quit. I, I was like six, so I can't really remember, but yeah, no, but those things like stick with you for a lifetime when you oh, have yeah. just like those random things that stick out from childhood where you're yeah. just like, oh my God, like this scarred me. I, I still think about this. Yeah. It's like those TikToks where you're just like, people think of stuff and they're just like, Ugh. oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know you're talking about, yeah. I'm out of my coffee or no, I have a little bit. This is my final sip, but <laughs> What are you most looking forward to about 2021? Or you can also choose if you have like um, a happy moment or something that happened or something that you heard about that just put a smile on your face recently. Um, just something to end it on a good note. Uh, I mean, I'm really looking forward to getting to see all my friends. It's been over a year for me to see a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited for that. And I'm really excited to be able to get back out onto the competition floor um, just because I, I love the pro I love the whole process, especially like getting the nice leotard and getting and doing my makeup. I haven't done my makeup, like comp makeup in such a long time and I miss it a lot. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Have you like put on a leotard since like all of this started? I mean, not not put on a leotard, obviously you try. Like a competition <laughs> leotard, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but a competition um, leotard. I tried on the one I'm supposed to wear at Winter Cup yesterday that because I just got it. But other than that, no, I would not willingly put on a competition leotard. <laughs> and do we have any hints on the cup? I mean, I won't, I won't let you spoil it or anything, but what, what, what's the style of the competition leotard? Did you design it for winter cup? Uh, so this one is one of Sylvia P's um, stock leotards, but I customized the color of it. Okay. But it, let's just say it'll, it'll match. It'll match me. 
Okay, cool. Well, when I say match, when I hear you say match me, I'm thinking of like your awesome hair color. So I don't know. We'll kind of see. I'm sure it's going to be cohesive or whatever. Lori was just talking about how all of hers are like superhero themed. I feel like all of you are like stepping up the leotard game. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, because styles only last so long. You got to always keep it fresh and you got to, got to do it for the gram too. <laughs> Definitely. Speaking of, last thing I wanted to mention, you last year at American Cup, you had, I mean, typically I think you kind of kind of sometimes have like blonde highlights and stuff, but what inspired the color change? Uh yeah, so I had balayage for like two years. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like over quarantine and everything, it wasn't more towards the end. I I've always I saw this one picture on Pinterest once and it was this girl with like rose gold hair and her like brown roots so strong I'm like oh my god I want to do that so bad like I've been wanting to do this for at least two and a half years mm -hmm. I was like you know what now is the perfect time I'm gonna do it and I did it but the first time it turned out purple oh my gosh I went I, because my hair is so dark yeah it, the pink just didn't take the first time and yeah. now it's I this is my second time redying it pink I just got it redone like a few days ago. I, I don't know. It just, I feel more expressive, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So if you just got it redone a few days ago, I'm assuming it's here to stay for at least the next few months. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it'll, in a few days, it'll fade to like more of a lighter pink, like rose gold, which is like what I'm going for. But obviously like the first few days are just like, bam, vibrant pink. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I just got a haircut. I didn't get a dye or anything, but the first few days you're just like, Ooh, got to adjust all of that. And then you get used to it or right. it fades or whatever. And it kind of looks like you want it to look. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Morgan. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank um, you for having me. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we will see you at Winter Cup. Yeah. Um, and yes, good luck and see you in Indianapolis. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye.